everybody, we're going to have an amazing time with a very special guest, a woman that has my utmost respect as she takes on the cultural warrior type issues of our day to day battle right here in America. So stay tuned. You'll find out who that is in a moment. Real Life presents the Jack Hibbs Podcast. With intention and boldness to proclaim truth, equip the saints, and impact our culture. Today, if this podcast lifts you up and encourages you to live a more fulfilled life in Christ, then make sure you leave us one of those five-star ratings. To us, that's like saying amen or yes. Then that rating will encourage others to listen. Now open your hearts to what God's Word has to say to you. Here is Jack Hibbs. Well, welcome to this podcast, and we are going to have a tremendous time together today, and you're going to see the reason why. It's going to be filled with energy, insight, wisdom, and frankly, what I love so much, activism. And you heard me right. Yes, I'm a pastor, but I believe that Christianity and our faith is active. It should make a big difference. Faith is a verb, and it should be moving. And we have with us today Penny Nance, who has been a mover and shaker in the social and cultural battlefield in America, when it comes to women's rights, when it comes to uh, su Supreme Court justices uh, being uh, approved or nominated or uh, campaigned for, when it comes to what's going on in your local culture as a community and nationally. Penny has her hands on everything and we're impressed by her. She is the CEO and uh, president of the Concerned Women for America. And so I'm honored, we are honored to have with us Penny Nance. Thank you, Great oh my goodness, I appreciate that. That's a lot for a preacher's kid from Appalachia, graduate of Liberty University, get to be here with Is that you. Right, Liberty. Yes, I actually serve on their board of trustees now which means a lot, but it's just a deep honor to be here with you, Pastor Hibbs, and to wow. have been with you last night talking about support for Israel. Yeah. Just what a wonderful church. You have an incredible ministry, and I'm grateful to be here with you. Well, thank you. Um, the people at the church I pastor make it very easy for me to pastor. Mm. They're, as you saw last night, mm -hmm. they're out in force. She's referring to an evening that we just hosted, Stand with Israel. Mm -hmm. And so we had a tremendous time together. And Nancy led the congregation uh, in specific prayer points, uh, and it was powerful. But we're here today to talk about um, what is on your heart. What, mm -hmm. what is burdening uh, your ministry, your mm -hmm. heart, and what needs to be said at a time like mm -hmm. this? We're living in very, very, yes. uh, you know, to us it's bizarre days, but mm -hmm. yet these are days that have been mm -hmm. uh, announced in Scripture. Yes. We're not surprised by these days, mm -hmm. uh, but share mm -hmm. with us what's what's burning in, in your heart. Well, you know, I think I C.S. Lewis, I think, said it so well. There's no neutral ground in the universe. Mm -hmm. Every square inch and every split second is claimed by God and counterclaimed by Satan. And that's really the crux of the battle that we're in. And it's been since the beginning of the time, since the fall of man. Yeah. And here we are. And many of these battles aren't even new. Mm -hmm. um, most, many of your viewers maybe know Beverly LaHaye founded Concerned Women for Absolutely. America in 1979 from here in California. And then they moved the operation, the organization to Washington, D.C. Right. But they started... These women, these faithful Christian women came together in 1979 to stand up for truth, the truth in the public square and, um, and fought, fought the ERA and mm -hmm. won. Because if you remember, it was sailing through before Christian women woke up and said, wait a minute. If this passes, because it sounds kind of good, right? The equal sure. rights for women, like we're for that. Right. Equal pay, sure, we right. get it. Right. But then they found out reading between the lines that actually that meant that it would strike down all the pro-life prohibitions in states. It meant the very things that we're fighting right now, men and women's locker rooms, men and women's sports, all those things. And like, wait, we're not for that. And so they came together and they educated people and educated their friends their friends and their families and their churches and their Sunday schools and the parents, teacher associations and mm. all their friends and came together and got people out and prayed and worked and they were victorious. But Satan doesn't have any new ideas. No, he no, just no. He just re loses and reconstitutes and comes back. That's right. And we fight those same battles just like we are today. In fact, I think it's very good with, with what you just said. 
Satan is, he, he's not an originator. Mm -hmm. He cannot do that. You're exactly right. He will uh, do everything in a knockoff form. And so what he does is he promises people liberty and freedom mm -hmm. when in actuality it's bondage. But he packages it in a, in a very right. uh, tasty, almost mm -hmm. like candy-like style that if you're not grounded in the word, mm -hmm. if you're not a follower of Christ, you're going to fall for it. I mm -hmm. mean, look, Eve was not a dummy. So we've got to believe that when Satan mm -hmm. spoke to her, he must have spoken in such cunning and appealing ways mm -hmm. that she fell for that. So today, that tactic still works yes. to wrap something up uh, with all the glitter and the bow. Mm -hmm. But when you open it up, mm -hmm. there's this pan Pandora's box. And we're seeing that in our culture today where we have gone through and, and you please correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we started with. Uh, like you said, the equal rights for women. Of course, mm -hmm. we're, we're all in favor for that. But at Satan the same... is a good marketer, though. I will say oh, that. Mar oh, well. <laughs> Master marketer. A, a tremendous. <laughs> yeah, he's able to get around the world in a moment what, it t what takes Apple computer, you know, months yeah. or years to market out there. But um, there, there's this thing where, oh, you're in bondage. You're not happy. You need this mm -hmm. to really be this, something. This is the answer. Oh, I've, yeah, this is the answer. And here's your truth. Speak your truth. Yeah, what do you feel? That's your truth, and this is my truth. So this is my truth. And the confusion that has ensued. I, I recently, and I've had been thinking a lot about the truth. I keep talking about it because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, mm -hmm. and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by That's me. Great. Jesus is truth. We only know truth because we know God, who That's is right. the author of truth, right? And then, and we have the Holy Spirit to help clear away the cobwebs and see the reality mm. of these situations. And sometimes not even right away. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's through prayer. Right. But you have an entire society that particularly, um, I, you know, under COVID, where communities were mm. broken, where churches... Yep. Not great churches like yours, but churches that were even my churches that didn't come back together. Mm. They're very slow to come back together. They couldn't even manage to go to their parking lots and come before the Lord. And so young people were alone. They were, yeah. they were broken off from community. They couldn't go to school. They had to have a computer in order to try to learn, although we know they didn't. Right. We know that our school, our school children particularly, our, uh, our, our underserved communities, are several years behind where they yes. should be and may never catch up. The people that were hurt the most mm. by the heavy hand of government were the people who are the least of these. And when any of us said anything, oh, we wanted wow. to kill old people. Right. Clearly that was it. We're selfish. We don't care. And so um, you had young people and old people alone and lonely in their homes and we have had we have record numbers of suicide now That's right. record numbers of fentanyl overdoses people fell off the wagon people got involved in drugs and young kids went searching for love and found the dark corners of the internet and were dragged into the whole trans movement right and we had That's doctors exactly right. who were making bank at $100,000 a pop and then lifelong medical patients in order to do trans surgeries on little kids. Listen, with what you just said so clearly, do you think there's any, I mean, you and I know there's a day of reckoning before God, but before that time comes, do you think they're, they're ever going to be held accountable? For these physicians that that thought up these horrific mm -hmm. things of mutilating this kid or this person, mm -hmm. do you think they'll ever be held accountable? Well, I don't know about the they, but I will tell you that, and I know you think this too, that Satan always overreaches, always right? Over, always overplays. Always overreaches. And so it went from, you know, we need to respect everyone, okay, I get that, to you have to, you have to deny reality Mm. And you have to, uh, you have to um, ascertain that my truth, which is a lie, mm -hmm. is the truth. And you have to call me another pronoun. You have to pretend that I am a woman when I'm a man and welcome me into your sorority, into your locker room, onto your, um, onto your sports team. And that's where they went too far. Yeah. Because mothers around this country, and I, you know these women, who got up at, oh, dark 30, 
and drove their children to their sports team, to their practices, watched their daughters work so hard all their life for career, for their careers, in order just to have an opportunity to compete and to go to college on a scholarship and to win trophies and to win titles. And it was all taken away. And so you're seeing finally this moment, because at the beginning you had these young women who couldn't say anything because their scholarships were at risk, but now they're graduating. Yes. And you have everyone from uh, uh, Gaines, what's her Riley, name? Riley, Riley Gaines, Gaines, who yeah. I know well and love. Yeah, we had and, on her program, yeah. And you have, and she's, you know, a, no, a notable person who early on came on because she swam against Leah Thomas. Right. Another person who you don't know as well is that one of our members, her name's Kylie Allons, 31 time All American champion from NC State, owns, has school titles out sure. the ears. Wow. And she also swam against Leah Thomas, but her story is a little bit different. She, of course, resents the fact that she came in further behind because of him. But her biggest issue is that when they got there, they had no idea that they were going to be sharing a locker room with him. No one told them ahead of time that a man would be in their locker room. An anatomically correct man who still dates girls is going to be in their locker room. Now, I didn't really know this. Wait a minute. I get the at Georgia Tech. And I get NCAA the biology change. part. Did you just say that he still dates girls but yes. swims against women in the women's That's competitions? True. That's correct. So we're we're he's a lesbian. We're, <laughs> so we're we're crazier than I thought a moment ago. Oh, we're totally crazy. But not everybody is crazy. Just the grown-ups that are supposed to be in charge are crazy. The heads of the NCAA and the new head of the NCAA, Charlie Baker, brand new guy, doesn't seem to be catching on either. So what happened is uh, Kylie, so this was something that I did not understand until she explained it to me. I've never swam competitively in my life. But when you do, you don't just change one time. You change several times. You're in a practice suit. You're out of that. You're in something else. You change several times. In the last suit for the actual heat, you're putting on a, a performance suit that covers you from your knees to your neck. It's very thin, and it takes between 10 and 30 minutes to get into. It's very tight, and you, you have to be very careful, or, or it will tear, I suppose. Mm. And so the women were so nervous. Now, think of this. Kylie's a senior. This is her last chance. She's at Georgia Tech. This is her last chance. She's worked up her entire career for this moment. And instead of being thinking about her race and what she needed to be thinking, being having her head in the mm-hmm. game, she's having to think about, oh, my gosh, is he coming around the corner? Is he in here? What's yeah. going to happen? And so you know what she did? Is she took her swimsuit, she left the locker room, and she found a utility closet. She was the one driven into the closet, and a lot of her teammates went with her. The girls changed in the closet rather than being in the locker room with a man. You would think that the other team would say, there you go. Now you're thinking. You're changing in the utility room where Mm -hmm. you should change. Mm -hmm. But that probably wasn't enough for them. Mm-hmm. They, they, they probably, the, the, the changing of your, your uniform or your swim gear in, in the uh, utility room is not enough. What must be enough is that even if you could beat this man in mm-hmm. the event, you better not beat him. You have to ascend. Because could you imagine, has it happened yet? I'm honestly ignorant about this. Has a woman yet beat him in, in, in swimming? Has he lost um, Yes, anybody? but, you know, we're not really sure he, if it's real. Right, frankly. and um, Because that would be very unloving of But her. regardless, there are below him several women sh- that should be in, or women that didn't even make the team because, because of, him, of him, right? And it's not just swimming. It's track. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Le- weightlifting. Oh, it's r- we, we just saw it in the U.S. Marine Corps. There's a, a laughing stock video on TikTok mm-hmm. where the U.S. Marine Corps just went down a massive path of compromise because of... of Really, mm-hmm. not only could the, the 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 test that you had to take physically to become a Marine, most men can't make it. Mm-hmm, right. Well, they wound up changing the requirements and the time allowed for mm-hmm. the uh, endurance to be so skewed. Mm. And it's it got it's all on video, mm-hmm. and then it's it's been played uh, in Russia. It's been played, uh. yeah, it's been played in Iran. And mm-hmm. these people are laughing at the U.S. Marines because there's a woman 
who can't carry an 80 pound mm -hmm. sack backpack mm -hmm. uh, gear up a mountain. And so there's the, and there's this Marine standing around cheering her on and the, the, the spin out there in, in the, the other countries is this is what the U.S. Mm. Marines have become. That's dangerous. That is dangerous. And, and you know, the the recruitment rates in our military are abysmal. 44%. And, uh, and yeah. I say this as an Army mom. My son will be active duty in the yeah, Army as a you. second lieutenant in a year. And um, I am pro-military. I we, we love our military. But we there needs to be some changes, and it has to start at the top. That's right. It has to start with the commander-in-chief. Right. And so, um, but, Wait, you know. who is that? <laughs> what is his name? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think. Does Joe Biden know he's the commander in chief? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, but I will say you, your original question is: Do I think there's a reckoning? Yes, yeah. I do. And I will tell you that I've seen glimpses of hope. And of course, always God is in control. Amen. He yes. he he loves the weak. He loves women. He recognizes that it is wrong for yeah. them to be taken advantage of. And this is a situation in which they are. But. Aside from that, you know, we've come alongside and linked arms with a group of women that we have nothing in common with except for this. And this is they're called the Women's Liberation Front. These are radical leftist women who many of whom are bisexual and lesbian. Can a guy join? Um, I may. No, no, they're, they're on our team on this. They, they're like a woman is it. You can materially not change from being a woman to a man. They are st they come hard. They're like the few little things wow. that women fought so hard for, and they're 100 yeah. percent right. The right to vote. Right. It took a hundred years That's for us right. to get the right to vote. We've only had it for a hundred years, and the fact that you know these few little set asides, and that you know we only had um, the Title IX for 50 years. Title yeah. IX gave us the opportunity to have equal opportunity in education and right. sports, and suddenly the people that work so hard have have changed teams and they feel completely betrayed mm. um it, you know i think it was a woman from hawaii patsy mink congresswoman from from um Cal no from hawaii was the sponsor of that bill she is turning over in her grave at this point to see what's happened to title nine so um one of the things that cwa has done as we move into this moment is to really try to to really um set down some markers and to get ahead of things. And one of the things we did is we went to, um, a, we put together a presidential pledge for American women. And we went and sent it to all the presidential candidates, Democrats and Republicans. We sent it to everyone. This is, uh, this is current. Currently. And so we've had four presidential candidates sign it so, so far. So, so right now, everybody, listen, this could be breaking news Right here on this podcast. Yes, and so if you go to concernwomen.org, we have a copy of it up. And, you know, even you can take the same pledge, and we have a version of it that you can take to your city council. Right on. Take to your, take to your school board. Yeah. Take to anyone that you want, because this is an easy one. For, it should be for right-thinking people to sign. And it says, as president of the United States, I promise to uphold truth, the truth that women are exclusively female, only women can be pregnant and bear children. Only women can be mothers. Under law, under my administration, the status and dignity of women and girls will not be compromised in law policy. That sex is binary is a scientific reality, and all federal agencies will be directed to hold up this fact in every policy and program at home and abroad. Um, a person's claim of gender and identity does not overrule their sex. My administration will focus on affirming sex-based distinctions to protect women in every area, such as shelters, prison, housing, health care, defense, education, and sports. I will protect the dignity of women and motherhood in all circumstances. That's awesome. That's the person I want to elect. And are you at liberty to tell us? Yes, who I would have. Well, I'll tell you who the first person was. Let's hear it. It was Donald J. Trump. There he goes again. There he front. goes again. And yeah. he was, and he was the first guy I hand, I gave it to him. Actually, I think I have a picture on my Instagram if any of your viewers want to come. When my husband and I went up, the funny thing about it is because you know President Trump, and he he does have a great sense of humor. He, he does. started reading it, and he got to the first thing. And I put it. I said, "I'd like for you to take a look at this, Mr. President." 
He said, uh, he was reading, I promise to hold the truth that women are exclusively female. Only women can be pregnant and bear children. Only women can be mothers. He looked at my husband. He's like, can you believe this? Like, can you believe that I have to tell people that this is what I believe? And that was just his gut reaction on it. He got it immediately. So he was the first guy out of the gate. And I was very grateful for that. So, I mean, it's been months that I gave that to him. Um, And then... Uh, after that was Vivek Ramaswamy signed it, and then Nikki Haley, and just, I don't know why it took so long, but Governor Ron DeSantis has signed just as a few days ago. So we've got four. We're going to continue pushing it, but i got to tell you, I it means a lot to me that President Trump immediately was spot on and understood the well, question and the time of the day. Look, it speaks, We've you and I have been with him before, and, it, and he's Boy, don't, don't we long for the days of mean tweets? <laughs> yes. If that's the big national issue is a mean tweet, oh, oh my man. goodness. But oh, my goodness. He uh, has a, a remarkable ability to read the room, mm-hmm. to read you. He has the uh, remarkability. People are shocked when they hear this, mm-hmm. but he is an amazing listener. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time that I met him, I think it was in Miami, uh, and I was surprised at how quiet he was in the room as people were talking. He didn't interrupt people. Mm-mm. He was gathering data. You could see the mm-hmm. gears turning. And once he is determined about something, he's locked on mm-hmm. like a missile. Mm-hmm. And we watched him uh, respond accordingly. And this kind of leadership mm-hmm. is what we need to now mm-hmm. today in America, for that matter, the world, where it is correct, it's decisive, mm-hmm. And he doesn't he doesn't pull the trigger unless he knows uh, what's going to happen. He's mm-hmm. not he's not a knee jerk reaction person, and uh, so I'm not surprised. Yeah. Well, that, and that, I, but I'd also add to that that he has a really solid gut, right? He he has you know, I, and I don't I think he's on a spiritual journey as we all are. Right. But I think you know he has a solid understanding of of certain things, and particularly issues like this. In the second debate, he famously went for the first time we saw a presidential candidate go after the other guy on abortion and say, you're the extremist. That's right. The fact that you want to rip a little baby limb by limb from its mother's womb. No, I'm not for that. You're the extremist. And um, and we're like, (laughs) yep, where's this guy? Look, where we we've been waiting for this guy. And it's Donald Trump. I mean, who knew? So watch. Let me interrupt this whole thing on this with what you just said. You just hit a nerve that I have and you are so right Trump just said it the room went silent people gasped (laughs) and yet why was that reaction thus it's because he said what everybody was honestly really thinking how is it why is it that for some and now here I'm a pastor I'm a Christian so don't don't read this the wrong way people but we're at war it would be easier if we actually had our AR-15s and hand grenades and tanks and airplanes. That would be easier than the war that we're in right now. We're in an invisible war. It's a war of not only, I believe, spiritual dynamic, but the war of words and what is meant. So when Trump responds the way that he does and he gets the magnitude of votes behind him or wins the polls as he is doing what is happening what's going on he is speaking truth now i i agree with you i think he's on a journey finding out who god might be Mm -hmm. uh we have to work on that more with him (laughs) but having said that i'm not i already have a savior i've Mm -hmm. got a messiah his name's Mm -hmm. jesus Mm -hmm. amen when it comes to president why is it that the christian community has somehow deluded themselves into thinking that, well, we can't vote for Trump because he's not polite. Mm -mm. Well, when is politeness when it comes to warfare like this a virtue? I don't understand this. I believe in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Don't get me wrong. But here we are. We've got somebody who's like a Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. We've got a Cyrus that acknowledges the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, makes the right decisions, People who read their Bible, we have no evidence for sure that Nebuchadnezzar or Cyrus is in heaven, yet God calls both of them my servants, and they did the right thing. Trump has survived several FBI forensic uh, uh, 
audits, mm -hmm. you and I may not be able to survive that. I, I may not be able to produce a, a receipt for a basketball I bought two years ago. Trump survived these. He's gone through impeachment uh, attempts. He survived these. He's still alive today. Mm -hmm. He's he's being sued by everybody and their mother, mm -hmm. and yet he's surviving. Nobody could survive these types of things, and yet the man is still standing. And having said that, Penny, what would you say? And then I'll tell you what I would okay. say. <laughs> what would you say to Trump right now? Mm -hmm. If Trump was sitting at this chair over here, mm -hmm. uh, President Trump, this is what we would love to hear from you moving into 2024. Mm -hmm. Well, I think first, and I, and I have said this to him, I am so grateful that he understands that he's making promises to the American people, and he intends to keep them. That's right. Seriously. And I have to tell you, I have to admit, I'm kind of embarrassed about this, but I kind of gotten trained by really good Republicans. I mean, like George W. Bush, who was an evangelical, that you listen to what they say, and then you plan on them falling through on maybe half mm. because they're going to get in there in the deep state. And I didn't, I used to not believe in that, by the way. No, nobody did when we first heard yeah, that. Yeah. I, I thought that was crazy. I thought that, you know, it was yeah. conspiracy theory. No, no it's real. Yep. I mean, maybe not in the way some people see it, but certainly there is, you know, a group of people who are burrowed into the system and the administration and slow roll everything that the other side tries to do. Right. But, um, what I saw from President Trump is he told you what he's going to do, including who his Supreme Court justices were going to be, That's right. which, by the way, gave us the overturn of Roe v. Wade. That's right. He told us that he was going to move the embassy That's right. from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Which every president prior said that they would do. For 22 years. And here's something that a lot of people don't understand. You probably know this. Congress passed that law. And in order for it to not happen, That's right. they had to sign a waiver. Yeah. Every six Every months. Every six months. So not only, all they had to do for it to happen is do nothing. Right. So they actively they, they, had to stop right. it from happening. And so President <gasps> Trump said, I'm going to move the embassy. And they come to him and like, here, sign this. And he's like, what, what's that? And he's like, that's the waiver. You can't move the embassy. He's like, but I said I was going to move the embassy. And then they're like, well, you can't do that. The Middle East will burn. And mm -hmm. the State Department, you know, harpies all said, you Somebody, can't do it. Someone in that room said... With all due respect, Mr. President, you will be starting the Third World War. That's right. They did tell him that. Yep. And he said, I don't believe that. That's right. It's not he probably happen. said a little more colorfully than that. And he said, I'm signing it this time, but never again. You get it worked out and you get it done, and then we're going to move it. And so I was grateful to have actually been present at the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem Incredible. and watch the Israeli oh my people weep yeah. <laughs> with joy and to celebrate in the streets with Donald Trump's name hanging over Everywhere. because that meant safety for them. Yeah. That meant that once again, someone recognized the eternal capital of Israel is Jerusalem. Yeah. And we know this to be true. And so I guess I would start by, and as I have in the past, saying thank you. But we also understand and we recognize this and we thank you for this. But we understand we also need to look forward in the future. Yes. Because we are That's in it. troubled times in this country. That's it. The economy is in the tank. People are having trouble paying their bills, putting food on their table. Parents no longer believe their children have a brighter future than they had. That's the first time this That's happened right. since they've been asking that question in polling. I mean, we really, as a country, have, have really lost sight of being that shining city on the hill. Mm. We have, and at, at the crux of that, I truly believe, is the fact that we've allowed this cancer to metastasize in our educational system. Right. And we have spent billions of taxpayer dollars paying for ideologies that are absolutely um, sinful anti and hurtful and anti-American anti to, be, to, be, um, yep. to be used in our campuses all over this country. Yeah. And even in our elementary schools, as we were just discussing these ideologies. Mm -hmm. And so what I would say to him is, Mr. President, what are you going to do about all these things? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to help us restore America? And I would say, and, and as I have done, is remind him that we all are under the authority of the King of Kings. Yeah. And so when I'm with the president or, or any leader, my prayer is to always point them towards Jesus yep. first. Yep. And 
when we recognize the pecking order of reality, mm. <laughs> the heavenly pecking order, That's right. that God, Jesus is king, That's right. as they said in Revelation, no king but no Jesus. King. But underneath that, underneath his authority, he places people in authority, which also means Joe Biden at this time. And it's we need true. to pray for them, but we also need to work hard to have a, a righteous leader who can lead us in the direction that will stand within the principles mm. of God. Let me say this, because some Christians, they just don't get it. You just said we need to get a righteous leader. The, the bubble-wrapped Christian says, well, sorry, Penny, I can't vote for Trump because he's, you know, his past... They forget about their own past, mind you. Right. <laughs> um, no, no. Penny said uh, a righteous leader. Mm -hmm. A righteous leader means a leader that does the right thing, not a leader that glows in the dark, walks on water, mm -hmm. that can raise the dead. Okay, we've got Christ mm -hmm. Jesus for this. We are not... I Years ago, this popped into my head, and, and I'll say it again. We're not to be looking for the Messiah to arrive on Air Force One. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's not going to happen. That's right. But you put Trump's promises up against his actions mm -hmm. and what those actions were actually about, mm -hmm. and you have Donald J. Trump as that righteous mm -hmm. leader. Now, I'm mm -hmm. going to get hate mail for that, and I love <laughs> it. It actually, I enjoy that. But try to unpack that. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says, I'm loving this verse. I'm studying it. I'm marinating in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to confess, I read it probably all my life as a believer. Never really stopped to think what it meant. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 10 verse 6 says, By your obedience to Christ, punish all disobedience. And by doing so, your obedience will be commended. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that, what does that mean? Where does that play out? Well, in this republic, mm -hmm. we don't go around throwing bombs at our opponents. Right. We vote. Mm -hmm. We speak up. We go to school board meetings. Mm -hmm. We honor the Constitution, which gives us the right to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to be involved. Uh, we're, we need to wrap this up. Tragically, we're running low on time. I, but I want to, mm -hmm. it's my turn to respond yeah. to my question to you about what would you say to, to President Trump? I would say this. I would say, President Trump, if I could be your advisor for a moment, I'd say this. Your track record's already established. Mm -hmm. We know what you can do. It's a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Regarding your past and who was after you and, and uh, crooked Hillary and, mm -hmm. and the deep state, we get that too. Mm -hmm. But here's what we need from you. If you want to quietly take care of all that mess once you're elected, go ahead. More power to you. But right now, we've got a whole lot of young people who are real, listen, who are real suckers for promises, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll forgive your school debt or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. President, you're the only one that can actually follow through on the promises. Here's what young people need to hear, and you'll have their vote. In fact, this is what we all need to hear, and you'll have our vote. Tell us where you're going to take us. Mm -hmm. That's why we voted for you in the first place. Mm -hmm. You told us how bad it's been, so you said, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And we jumped on board. We, over, we overlooked your past and the, mm -hmm. t you know, what it, we're, we're going to take a, a, a risk on Donald J. Trump. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, we voted for you. Turns out we were very glad we did because you took us forward. Mm -hmm. I think if Trump began to talk forward, like you said a moment ago, here's why if you're 19 years old, you here's why you should vote for me. Or if you're 85 years old, here's why you should vote for me. I think, it's, I think it would be a slam dunk and somebody's gonna say, oh, Jack and Penny, you guys are so naive. The cheat is overwhelming. Hey, you know what? Let's say there is a cheat. How do you stop the cheat? There's only one way to stop cheat, and that is to turn out in mass. Mm -hmm. Cheat only works when the numbers are close enough to manipulate. That's right. When a mass group shows up to vote, the cheat won't work. That's right. It's very simple math. Overwhelm them. People, you need to show up. First of all, you've got to mm -hmm. register to vote, mm -hmm. and then you need to show up. And you need to vote. Listen, we, um, right now we're in a cuckoo state called California. 
we get to vote for months here. Uh, <laughs> Vote as soon as you can. Yep. Make sure your vote, vote is taken care of. Mm -hmm. But what what are some of the closing words? Tell us all well, about, you know, how, how can right. people get plugged in and why should they support you guys? Well, I appreciate that. Well, let me just say that I think that I just want to finish this one thing about the president. I had a Time uh, magazine uh, reporter ask me, who now works in New York Times, like, why did evangelical women vote 82% for Donald Trump? Don't they know about all the things he did? Like, yeah, I mean, we're all sinners, by the way. Yeah. Christians recognize we're sinners and we're broken. Um, but we weren't looking for a pastor and we weren't looking for a husband. <laughs> That's we right. were looking for a bodyguard. A guy that would stick oh, the goodness. knife in his teeth and swim the moat for us. And that's why we supported him. And that's why we will support him again if he can manage to win the primary. And I believe that he will. But I want to say um, that right now at Concern Women for America, we are working on policy issues. And we talked about some of those right now. And I, um, we are the nation's largest public policy women's organization. We have chapters all over this country. Last night, mm -hmm. our uh, California leader was there. Also, we have 250 Young Women for yeah. America chapters. And we've been doing pro-Israel rallies on their campuses all over this country. What a refreshing yes. antithesis to the hate and the just the, the evil, uh, vapid, arguments that have been coming out of the left. We've had these young, beautiful women coming together, prayer vigils, inviting the Jewish students from their campus, praying over mm. them, being there with them. And I've watched these young Jewish students weep and say, this is the one I felt the most supported since October That's 7th right. on my campus. And so we would love for your listeners to come join what we're doing. Come to ConcernWomen.org. Follow us on all the social media channels. And um, yep. it's just great to be here with you. It's great to have you. Keep it up. Keep standing. Uh, there are several women in my life. My wife, obviously one of them. Uh, and you have that mantle. And that is a Deborah. There's a Deborah spirit from the scriptures who was no doubt Deborah, the woman judge of Israel, but she was a warrior mm -hmm. and she even led men into battle and she even deferred to them. She said to them, we're going to go into battle. And are you guys sure you want me to lead the way? Yes, lead the way. Because she was going to get all the credit. <laughs> and she told them, she said, you know, I'm going to get the credit yeah. for this. Are you sure? And she, said, and she look, we're talking about her right now. Yeah. And so I thank God for you. Yes, I thank, thank you. For, I thank God for your entire organization. And um, uh, women messengers matter in oh, this yeah. moment, especially all these issues we've discussed. Women's voices matter. So we want to train our women, our members, and women, our, your listeners, to mm. be able to be m more able and more blessed in their ability yeah. to share the truth, the gospel, their policy beliefs, and to advocate in the public square. So all the women watching right now, they need to go to? ConcernedWomen.org. Sign up, and we'd love to have you join what we're doing. And if you're a man watching and you just heard that, you can send your money to sure. them. Okay? Women we have money. Women sign up, <laughs> and men, you can send money. We'll <laughs> take it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So listen, as always, uh, on our gathering together at these podcasts, it's, it's our belief that it's time for you and I to live out what it is that we believe in. It's time for us to live real life. So God bless you guys until next time. This Jack Kibbs podcast, as well as all the broadcast outreach opportunities are listener supported. Will you consider partnering with us through a special gift? Go to jackhibbs.com to learn more and stay connected. Thank you.